Sand and salt spreaders were developed in the United States in the middle of the 20th century. Before that, crews kept winter roads safe by shoveling sand and salt from trucks. Things got easier when mechanical spreaders took over the heavy lifting. Winter storm brewing? Sand and salt spreaders have it covered. They distribute salt to melt the ice and sand for traction. They start with two big sheets of stainless steel. Computer-driven plasma torches carve the steel into the four panels that will be used to build the hopper. Next, the operator transfers the panels to another computerized machine. This one has numerous punch tools. They cut holes for nuts, bolts, bearings, and other components. Then it's over to a hydraulic press brake. It bends the bottom of the hopper panel to create a wide rim. This wide rim adds rigidity to the part. The team flips the hopper panel around so the press brake can bend the top. Computerized stops control the location of each bend. A worker clamps the hopper panel in a fixture to prop it up while he welds rib supports to the outside. He adds two or three ribs to each side panel depending on the size of the spreader. Once all the ribs have been welded, a team joins the four hopper panels together. They clamp a bar across one end to square up the structure. Once it's aligned, they weld the spreader hopper at the seams. These tight seams create a rugged structure that will hold up under the burden of heavy road salt or sand. Now, a worker builds the steel chute that the sand or salt will flow through. He attaches several brackets to the inside and outside of the chute. These brackets are for the adjustable steel flaps that direct the flow of salt onto the highway. Here, he installs the adjuster bar for one of the flaps. He swings the flap to confirm it moves freely. A pin is inserted in the adjuster bar to set the flap at the desired spacing. He attaches a bearing to each side of the chute. He slides a long steel shaft through the bearings until it protrudes from the bottom. He secures the shaft to the bearings. mounts a flexible plastic spinner to the protruding shaft. This spinner will spread the road salt or sand evenly across the road. Customers on tighter budgets sometimes choose salt spreaders made of mild steel instead of stainless. They spray a dry powder coat onto these units. Then they roll the part into an oven to bake it on. This durable finish will protect the hoppers from corrosion and general wear. Now back to the stainless steel spreader. The team fastens a gearbox to the side of the hopper. It will drive the conveyor that delivers salt or sand to the chute. A worker temporarily powers the gearbox with a drill to assist in the installation of the conveyor. He pushes the conveyor forward until the gearbox takes over. He installs a feed gate at the opening and screws the lever to the side of the hopper. They stockpile hoppers, chutes, and motors separately until an order is placed. This allows the customer to choose individual components before the final assembly. For example, the customer may want a specific gas motor or they may choose a hydraulic one. Once they've bolted the chute to the hopper, this sand and salt spreader is ready for an icy highway. It can spread material thick or thin depending on the road conditions.